Pa 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 pa. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Video Tech and also to another tech news video where I go over all of the latest news that happen in the tech world. I do hope you guys had a lovely weekend, but it's time to get back to work and get back into the tech news. So let's quick start off with our first topic. Now, lately we have been covering the Intel Arc GPUs quite a lot, and today is no different as we finally have some more leaked benchmarks to share. The major benchmarks was from a Geekbench 5, which isn't necessarily the greatest way to see gaming performance though, so take it for what you will. Now, the DG2 GPU, which is the flagship coming from Intel, has a score of 85,448, which puts it closer to an RTX 2070, but in previous benchmarks we saw that it actually beat the RTX 3070 Ti. This flagship SKU apparently has up to 512 execution units and up to 16 gigs of GDDR6 memory, with leaked clock speeds also showing a boost speed of 2.4 gigahertz. Now these are still just in engineering samples, so they will obviously still need some tweaking and potentially later on get a better performance and all also software getting up to date for these new cards and also probably getting better performance. But of course, we shall wait and see. And then next up, a while back, we talked about the new 13th generation Raptor like CPUs from Intel. Well, now we do have a launch date. Kind of. <laughs> in an investor meeting of 2022, Intel said that they were expecting them by the end of Q3. So at the latest, it should be around like September this year. Intel also mentioned that we would see up to double digit performance increases. This could mean up to like 15% in single and 40% in a multi-threaded performance benchmarks. Now, the mobile versions are set to launch in the fourth quarter. And if history is to repeat itself, that means that a new GPUs should also launch simultaneously, which could be either from NVIDIA or from Intel. It wouldn't be so bad if we actually had both of them launching at the same time. I mean, why not? <laughs> And then next up, Intel has made another big step though, this time hiring Rohit Verma, the senior fellow and lead Radeon discrete GPU architect for AMD. The almost nine years at AMD, he had an influence in a project that researched discrete GPU card technologies for both desktop and also portable systems, along with a large scope in SOC architecture specializations, utilizing CPUs, GPUs, fabric, power management, and most importantly, security so a lot of stuff. But now he is the new leader product architecture of discrete GPUs SOC at Intel. But it's not his first time at Intel either. Previously, he worked for Intel for 14 years as Intel's lead SOC architect. Now let's just hope that he can bring some new dynamics to Intel and also their GPUs. And also seems like everybody's just flip flopping between all of the big brands. So hopefully he can take some of the experience he learned with AMD and implement it in and Intel GPUs as well. Honestly, I just want more GPUs and more like options and of course lower prices. So it's just a win for us again. And then next up for some AMD news, the AMD Radeon 680M RDNA iGPU apparently outperforms the MX450 GPU from Nvidia. Now what makes this APU so impressive is that it actually has ray tracing and it showed a better performance in a 3D Mark's Port Royale against the RTX 3050 laptop GPU. The main cause for this is because the 3050 only has a four gigs of VRAM, which simply isn't enough even for ray tracing. The Radeon 600M GPU offers a better performance than both the GeForce MX450 at 25 watts and also Intel's i7 11370H in 1080p tests. It can't take on the GTX 1650 Max Q yet, but it does offer the ray tracing option, which none of the GTX series cards can. Now, I'm not exactly sure if you will actually use it in a games as of course ray tracing does use a lot of resources and you're going to lose a lot of frames for a more budget uh, gpu so not sure if it's just like bragging rights or it's actually going to be useful but we'll have to wait and see and then next up for some apple news apparently we're going to see a 13 inch a macbook pro a mac mini a 24 inch imac and a redesigned macbook air all of them are fitted with the newer rumored m2 
chip. Now, nothing has been confirmed yet, but the specs are rumored to have the same 8-core architecture as the M01 chip, but the graphics cores are said to be bumped up from the 7 or 8 to 9 or 10 cores. This will also distance Apple even more from using Intel chips in the future, and as seeing how the M1 chips actually performed, the M2 chips will be quite interesting to see. And then next up, some crypto hacking again going on. We have covered quite a few times here. It seems like a regular occurrence. And now this time, 32 users have had their NFTs stolen. The attack happened on a Saturday and 32 victims were tricked into signing a malicious payload that authorized the transfer of their NFTs. The total value of the NFTs were a staggering 1.7 million. The attack happened when OpenSea was migrating to their new Wyvern smart contract system. Now, OpenSea CEO did say we're actively working with users whose items were stolen to narrow down a set of our common websites that they have interacted with that might have been responsible for the malicious signatures. And then on Sunday, they tweeted, we'll keep you up to date as we learn more about the exact nature of the attack. Now, I'm not exactly sure how people are still falling for this because they know there's so much hacking and stealing everything going on with crypto and NFTs and everything. So you need to triple check, quadruple check, or, uh, 10 times a check for, uh, before you sign anything, you send something or anything. So I'm not exactly sure why people are still falling for this. You never share anything. You don't sign anything <laughs> and you do it on the main website, not on a different signature writing an email. I'm not exactly sure. But unfortunately, that is how you learn to not do it again. I've done the same thing, not with crypto, but not with other stuff. So unfortunately, it's a bitter pill to swallow, but that is how you learn. And then next up, we all like new phones and technologies that comes out with them. So this one uh, piqued my interest quite a bit because it does have two screens and also a night vision camera. We're talking about the Doji S98, which also rumored has the new six nanometer chip from a MediaTek codenamed NextG. <laughs> now also rumored specs for the phone is that it will have the Helios G96 GPU, eight gigs of RAM, 200. 56 gigs of UFS 2.2 storage with also the option of a micro SD card support up to 512 gigs. For the cameras, you do get a 16 megapixel selfie shooter and a triple camera system on the back, consisting of a 64 megapixel prime camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, and then also the 20 megapixel night vision camera. Kind of curious to see actually how good it is and how it works. Now, the main display is a 6.3 inch LCD with a full HD plus resolution. And then on the back is the second circular display, which is rumored to support a custom wallpapers and also double as a viewfinder, allowing you to take selfies on the rear camera. And I'm kind of surprised that not more companies are kind of doing this or making the front camera better, seeing as how popular filming yourself is and TikTok and everything. So we'll, we'll probably see it more later on of front cameras getting better or the rear cameras getting displays. Then it will also feature a 6,000 milliamp hour battery and it will have an IP68 or 69K a dust and waterproof resistance. So this will be a nice option for people who are a bit more outdoorsy and really needs to work in nighttime or in like darkness and drops their phone or gets wet. Meh, maybe there's probably some people out there who really need something like this. I think my dad kind of needs something like it. <laughs> and then uh, next up, whoever comes up with the code names at Intel uh, must be a very cool person as the new Intel Nux uh, code name is a Dragon Canyons. Now also we do have uh, some spec leaks as well. It apparently will feature up to an i9-12900 non-K for the flagship model. And then another model is said to feature an i7-12700. Now as for graphics, it will utilize the integrated Elder Lake X ELP graphics, allowing you to connect up to a, a dual slot discrete GPU. Now the Nook 12 Extreme will not feature DDR5 memory, instead it will feature DDR4 3200 megahertz memory with support up to 64 gigabytes. Now the new Nook does not come with any memory also, so you will need to buy that as separate. And also tracking down DDR4 SOTA memory isn't necessarily that hard, but if you're looking at the price point 
starting at $1,500. It does seem a bit rough as you do again need to buy memory and also a GPU, so it gets a bit pricey. But if you want a small, powerful system, then you do have the option there. And then uh, lastly, who remembers Dino Crisis? I don't at all, but Rwan apparently my editor played it and he said it was a fun and thrilling game. Now for some nostalgia, a fan made a new demo of the Dino Crisis on Unreal Engine 4. Now this has made some of the fans of Dino Crisis just want a another game, but unfortunately the developer that's owned by Capcom has been completely dormant and no news has been confirmed about the next installment from them. But feel free to check it out as there is YouTube footage of it and you can also apparently download the demo and play it yourself so you do have the option there and i have to say it actually looks pretty uh, cool so i might give it a try ron will probably try it out also but anyway that's pretty much it i do hope you guys enjoyed our take and news if you did please like share subscribe and comment like always also if you want to check out any of the topics it will be linked in the video description on our website so check that out but anyway thanks for watching guys and i'll check all of you uh wednesday for another tech news video cheers guys